<laughs> the sigh is done we head to the second chamber of three kids chamber is, of three which is fun. <laughs> now three is, there's nothing wrong with three they do trilogies of three mm-hmm. it's a magic number yeah it is there were you know a couple man and a woman like, had a little baby yes they yeah were. they did it was three in the family that's a magic, a magic number anyway animals God, you want to talk urban. about some good songwriting man you like remember that shit from 40 years ago yeah remember? schoolhouse rock rocked it was it because they got us at a young age or is it because the they songs, good songs. Are so, yeah there was a in the 90s uh, a lot of 90s musician covered all the schoolhouse rock songs i had that i had that album that was uh was- shannon hoon covered that poor thing and uh, did a beautiful version. Shannon Hoon from Blind Melon. Yeah. Let me give you a little inside dope. When Jennifer Schwabach, the woman I eventually married, the one who wears the Kev fucker jacket that, you're, that you gave her. Hmm. Jen Schwabach, it's not ringing any bells. Um, she uh, was dating a dude who was um, um, from high school and stuff who wound up being like, um, I don't know if he was a roadie or whatever the fuck on with blind melon so she went on tour with blind melon oh really yeah did then, she meet the little b girl she did cool uh, but yeah and then that boy died right yeah he, he passed away sadly all i can say is that my life is pretty plain that's the song right i think my life is getting gray is what he says are those the lyrics I, I think maybe not no, i mean i, I know my life is funny. getting gray jeez <laughs> look at gray. you yeah fucking reed richards laughs at you he's like i only got stripes on the side <laughs> i got the white walls look at that guy yeah. you're on no, your way I'm to uh, like 29 dare years say, of marriage go ahead dare i say that is a a nearing mike pence head of hair do i have a fly in my head is that what you're saying oh my god well remembered all right we're in the fi speaking of fi. fly it's the fi. By the way. 29 years of marriage i'm looking for those the our sex punch up from you i need those lines don't forget number one you're a fish fucker number two <laughs> here comes a face full of millet um <laughs> not you can't even remember the word what is the word What's i'm not the telling word? you come on millet millet i said millet it's not millet what is it it's milt milt I'm all milting. right here comes a milt in the monster milt. that's right milty um milt in the monster here come fucking milt. Milt happens. It does the body good. God, milt. <laughs> <laughs> yep, all those mnemonics I gave you earlier, none of them yeah. seem to work. All right, so we'll move on. You know that mullet that was getting his face eaten? He fucking launched a fucking face full of milt at the bird to get his feathers all stuck together. But the bird's like, I like it. I like it when the prey comes. <laughs> ah, when the prey comes, Kevin Smith's uh... <laughs> oh, it's thrilling autobiography. Of yes. Kevin Smith. Well, that'll be when I actually get you out into the fucking woods and you get to see some birds, and you're, that's going to be your memoir. I five fucking, minutes you spend in nature. I ain't bothering no birds, bro. Like, I'm not that bothering birds. I have a big long dude. lens. You're bothering birds, man. If I'm a bird and I'm in my nest and I look over, I'm like, you're bothering me. I don't care. Far away ah, just barf, barf. Barf. <laughs> Come here, kid. <laughs> and they get a lot of kids, right? They have like many birds at once, baby birds, chicks, or whatever mm-hmm. fuck. So yeah, that dude, there's words for all of those things. That dude could be like chick chick puke, and then chick <laughs> chick puke, and then chick chick puke. That's the comic like, that's the comic superhero. But that's our life. Oh, he's picking up all the chicks because they're one they're one shot a piece. They're not even as good as a Derringer. And shit. <laughs> um, all right, what are we doing for the f- okay? We're gonna put to rest animal urban legends. Mm. There's a lot of myths about animals, and we're like gonna begin cats, cats sleep on like you can steal your breath if it sleeps on your chest or whatever the fuck. That's one, but we're not going to cover that because it's stupid. But I'm saying of that nature, that kind of milt. 
Yeah. I mean, the big ones are really things that people still believe is what I'm trying to. We're, we're myth busting here, but without breaking any copyrights or, um, you know, violating any laws uh, for myth busters. Why don't you do this shit? Make it milk busters instead. Nobody's fucking competing for that title. Yeah, because it's terrible. Milk busters <laughs> is all about us. We go out at night to fish. Busting some shit. milk? No, we go out at night at fisheries with flashlights. When they're all fucking, and then we turn the light on real quick. <laughs> okay, okay. So and you'll be the milk. Them. You're the milk botherer. Yeah, the milk bother man. We're like, what the fuck? And then you know, we, <laughs> they're all surprised, <laughs> and they pull out, and they just fucking come. So we, and then we go in for a tight shot. I'm like, look at that milk. Well, they don't milk. pull out. They most fish, they lay the female lays her eggs, and then the male goes over them and releases the milk. And many do, do they not just, fuck? They many do not. I mean, sharks do, but in a weird way. But they most many fish only do it once. So, like a salmon swims upstream, the females they go fucking forever. Their bodies change. Their heads get these humps on them. They go up these. They avoid bears. They just get all the way up these uh, streams. And once they get there, the streams are oftentimes too small for them to swim in. They lay the eggs. They spread the melt. And they they do it once and then they die, and their death, their slow, horrifying, semi life, and you know they they degrade, feeds the young when they're born, so they give their all and it happens once. What do you mean? Like so, they're dying bodies when the fish are born. They're like nyan, nyan, nyan. fertilizes the stream and gives uh, material for the fish to the the new hatched fish to eat thank god peter parker didn't get that fucking ability yeah <laughs> spider-man spider-man comes once and then dies spider milk man <laughs> he's like you take some of this fucking spider milk mm. in Isn't your it? eight in your right in your eight eyes mm. <laughs> eight eyes because he's fucking another spider it's not like he'd oh, fuck that's a person true. yeah you're right. I forgot that he's really is Spider-Man and not any of the other creatures that we've been making him for the last six years. What is the, uh, what, speaking of creatures, the first urban we, myth you'd like me to bust? Bust it, man. Lemmings <laughs> commit suicide. <laughs> what? Lemmings commit suicide. That's always been they a sure thing. fucking do. That's the name of my acapella group that I'm still in is the Lemmings. <laughs> lemmings. I thought it was Lemmings commit suicide. That's a way funny fucking name. For well, me. no, it's just Lemmings. But, uh, lemmings don't go running over cliffs. They don't. And it started a lot earlier than we than we had thought. We touched on this in an earlier podcast sometime in the last millennium. And mm -hmm. um, but starting back in the 1530s, a geographer proposed that they actually fell from the sky during storms. And the most popular rumor is that they commit mass suicide when they migrate, that one lemming goes and the rest of them just follow. And that's just not true. And when Disney made their 1958 Academy Award winning documentary called White, White Wilderness, they couldn't get the lemmings to jump off the cliff. So they built a turntable and <laughs> put it, mounted a camera on it. They put lemmings on it and they spun it around. So the lemmings were like, what the, ah! and off they went. They faked it because they couldn't get them to do the behavior that people had believed for so long. And so that was known as the Great Lemming Massacre of 1956. <laughs> the Disney like, Lemming Massacre. And it, it turns out like the stuff in Bambi isn't true either. What do you mean? That it didn't really happen. Just like the Lemmings. <laughs> it's a Disney joke. I thought you were saying like, you know, Bambi's not really a deer. It's a fucking stag bitch or something. <laughs> no. no. Um, a little joke because it's a cartoon. Well, don't joke around when it comes to like fucking all I can think now is like Walt Disney going like they're like, Mr. Disney, they won't go over the cliff. It's just not their natural behavior. He's like, I'm Walt fucking Disney. Mm -hmm. And I want these lemmings to go over the fucking cliff. Now you build a little disc. That makes, <laughs> seems like it's fun, but it's going to make them dizzy enough to fall off this fucker. So we can make white wilderness, says the white man. You hear me? Yeah. That all seems plausible. That's fucking crazy, dude. That's crazy. That's crazy. That could they you did imagine? That. It's like me going like, you know, fucking 
Um, what's an animal I don't like? It's like saying this Polly doesn't want a cracker. Well, we're gonna make him want a cracker. Yeah, and just starve him and then jam it down his throat. Every Polly wants a cracker, though. This is like, you know, like fucking the elephant having a little dick, not one that can be a third leg. <laughs> okay. It's just like that. It's exactly like that. What's the other? So what there's, other? There's animal? other things. Earwigs. People still believe that earwigs live inside of your ears. Not helped by Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. Yeah. Where Chekhov like, uh, says, "They put creatures in our bodies." This is SETI Alpha Five. <laughs> <laughs> Any opportunity to get some. Uh, to get some Wrath of Khan out of Kevin. And some Montalban? Yes. Um, of my friend, I can say only this. Of all the souls I have encountered in my journeys, his was the most. <laughs> He's got a fly in his mouth. <laughs> Human. <laughs> one of my favorite performances um and a fantastic moment man like yeah. it's such a great like fucking really nice way to send off like a character that had been those two cats have been together since the beginning man you never thought yeah. you'd see fucking spock without kirk and if anyone was gonna die you would think it'd be fucking kirk but spock man just the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the of the few or the one. Or the one. Yeah, I love that. I movie, never man. took the Kobayashi Maru test. How do you like my solution? <laughs> I'm over here, Spock. <laughs> You're yeah. talking to the wall. <laughs> yeah. Spock, hey. Spock, remember can when, you see me? Remember when he bumps <laughs> into the wall when he walks over? He's like, yeah. <laughs> well, he's filled with some sort of fantasy radiation. Dude, I ain't fucking saying it's bad. I'm just like, <laughs> that's fuck. I can't believe they let that stay in the cut. Like, that's it's real. That's what would happen. And nobody had the sense to be like, this looks a little goofy. And they're like, fuck no. Because it works. Well, they left the stormtrooper hitting his head on the way into the detention uh, wing in, in uh, Star Wars. So I, I guarantee you that he didn't see that until like the third or fourth fucking public screen. <laughs> Maybe even until the third or fourth year of Star Wars. He was too busy it's counting fine. money. It's fine. I don't <laughs> care. I don't care. It's not easy being green. Well, uh, it turns out that the earwig is um, ear wiggler in uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, mean is pronounced earwicka. And they, earwicka. they think that the earwig is called an earwig because people, you would it was some like thing that people did where you flatten it out when you catch it and it looks like an ear when you flatten it and kill it. So it never once went inside. Doesn't go in your ear. ear does not lay eggs. You don't slowly go mad. Like the uh, rolled doll story. It is does anything go into your ears besides like bacteria. Is there any insect that's like, I think I'll try it out. I don't know. It like the capybara for your ears. You know, the capybara know. fish. But the one that goes up your dick hole? Yeah, yeah. That never happened. That never happened? It only happens to female cattle as they're crossing a river, and if they pee, it can swim through their pee stream. But it can't, like, make its way up the urination stream of a person peeing. So no, none of these should have been up a human's dick. That's all you snopes and that shit. Unless somebody pranked them and was like, shh. Yeah. Kevin oh. doesn't know that we've replaced his <laughs> his we, condom with a we took a fish with oh no candiru not capybara candiru fish we took a fish with only half a face and stuck it <laughs> stuck it up his dick and told him that it's a capybara fish no it's a candiru candiru fish yeah candiru do this <laughs> candiru this <sighs> um all right, All right. What's last third? one. Last one. There's only three this week. <laughs> I apologize to those hungry for knowledge, but we have three. three. three and look how much need. time it's cut down on. We've only been recording for an hour and 55 minutes. Three is all I need. Imagine how much more time it would be if we had 10 more examples. Mm -hmm. Three is all well, I need. Camels 
no. store water in where? their humps. They do not store water in their humps. Where are they? They store them. They're able to absorb water in their red blood cells, which swell up in size because they're not disc shaped. They're uh, what's the right word? Uh, they are oval shaped red blood cells. So they yeah. actually can they can saturate their bloodstream with water and over time lose it. Their humps, their humps, their lovely camel lumps are filled with fat. That's why they right. can go for so long without eating. And they can go for a long time without drinking because they have these specialized red blood cells. Now, let me ask you about the hump. Yeah. <clears throat> if they're if you're feeding a camel all the time, is the do the humps the humps are storing the fat. But if the camel ain't eating for a month, do the humps get smaller? It, the hump does get smaller if they don't eat. Okay. Hey, how long do they have? It's like a ticking clock. Like if the hump gets down by two feet, they're fucking dead. <laughs> yes. Look at my hump. I can hardly see it. I'm half the hump I used to be. And hump, this little Carly goes away. So there lies the phi, my there fun young cannibal. Kids. Psy and phi, we're through two chambers. We've emptied one of the Derringers, man. We got two shots left, ladies right. and gentlemen. And it begins with the why. Why? So you know the whys. We'll often uh, have people ask questions about science and other things that are interesting, but they'll also ask questions that are posers for Kevin to give his own take on. And so we'll begin with one of those in the, in the why. Okay. That is from Jonathan Waters or the John Waters at the John Waters. Jonathan Waters wants to know why. Why? Um, So he says, what do they mean by spice in Dune? What could spice actually be? Coke, right? Hmm? Cocaine. It's like the cocaine egg. that turns Coke. your eyes blue. Coke, yeah. it makes my brown eyes blue. And, or it's like like acid because it's like, isn't it open up your mind and shit like that? Suddenly you're like, I have no fear. Fear is the mind killer. Well, doesn't it also turn like the, the navigators into those hideous, don't they feed it to the fetuses and turn them into those hideous monsters? It turns it into a giant pussy face thing. It's just yeah. like... It looks like fucking Quato, man, but real big and shit. Yeah, and gross. And it, it looks folds. like the giant bug from fucking Starship Troopers, where fucking uh, Doogie Hauser was like, "It's afraid," and they were like, "Yeah, we've scared a bug." That was the like literally the climax of that movie. Yeah, they were like we got him, and he's afraid. Dude, he's scared of us. Best time ever. And Doogie's he's like, "Scary. We, we scared time. this fucking thing, man." You and fucker ever like, scare a bug? That's how I met your mother. He's like, hmm, that's it. <laughs> As, I'll, your joke's more current than mine. I went for a fucking Doogie Howser reference. That just goes to show you that I did not watch How I Met Your Mother. Well, I'm the first joke I made was um, uh, Best Time Ever, and nobody watched that. <laughs> oh, that's right. That was the NBC show, wasn't it? It, it was, or so. Um, um, so. So why? Why? What's that was that was what what is spice and you think it's like a it's it's comparable to a hardcore drug that of this in the 60s when the books were written like acid lsd or something because it expands your mind makes your, your eyes blue makes your balls suck up into your body you're all dick no fucking balls all meat no veg and you're like will they ever come back but you don't care because you're on the spice Wow. You want to know where your balls go? They grow huge and they fucking become third stage travelers, man. And they're like, <laughs> you can fold space with your in, inhaled balls. Fuck yeah, I already do. There's a whole universe down there. Granted, only one person ever came out of it, but still, <laughs> universe of one. Okay, next question comes from Scrump, Scrump. underscore one. Scrump, Scrump. one. Um, he says, there's evidence that shows that ancient animals on the whole were much bigger than current day animals. Are animals getting smaller to the point where they'll all just be the size of chihuahuas? 
They'll never get that small, but they will continue to get smaller and smaller the closer we get to the sun. Is it, wait, it hasn't, wait, we're not getting closer to the sun. What do you, what I is was that? just saying if you were paying attention, clearly you're on a fucking five, 10 second delay. I was um, going for an actual answer here, but I'll let you continue. That's usually the, the rhythm we have. People get I, to see me look at the notes I've made. I feel like animals, like they figured it out. They're like, all they do is eat us and ride us and hit us. So let's start giving them less to eat and ride and hit. Let's fucking take it small, man. We'll keep shrinking until these fuckers leave us alone. Who's with me? Who's with me? And some fucking, I don't know, fucking giraffe talked them into it. What's the smartest animal in the world? Um, dolphins? Some dolphin talked them all into it. He just used his power of, his squeaky like, oh, power so of persuasion. He's so cute. Do what he wants. <laughs> Look at that dolphin. Ain't he cute? Yeah. Blowhole. I could come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you could say the word blowhole and not give me five minutes on it. I mean, I'm telling you, isn't that like, that's where you're like, people are like, hey, fish, <laughs> what's your blowhole? And you're like, that's where the milk comes out. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, your impression of me is dead on. That's the weird thing to me is it's like, it sounds like I'm even saying it. <laughs> Please write that down and say that to Johanna. That is a good no, line. No. My blow to write it. is where the milk comes out. Here come the milk's coming out the blow hole. There you go. That's you fish 20, send them to me. I'll pick the ones I like. Fair enough. Um, but the milk's coming out the blow hole is a pretty hot way to. All right. It sounds like this is something you may want to say to your wife. <laughs> she won't make sense. I'd have to explain it. She'd be like, the milts come. Well, I'm like, yeah, because Andy's nickname is fish. <laughs> She'd be like, what does that have to do with this? And why are you fucking saying it to me? I'm like, well, Andy won't say it. She's like, it would make more sense if Andy said it. I'm like, that's what I fucking said. But Andy won't say it because he's a little fucking pusshole. Because he's a little fucking blowhole. <laughs> <laughs> with yes, I understand this is the moment of the heat of passion, but I really don't understand <laughs> the logic behind something that Andy would make more sense saying than you. I'm like, it don't matter. I came. And you're like, what? You don't listen to the podcast? She don't. She don't <laughs> listen to any of the podcast. She don't even listen to the one she's on. <laughs> While she's recording it, she ain't listening. She's not even she listening. She don't, know. she don't even listen. I don't even know if she knows that I'm still here. <laughs> Okay. Fucking, she's like, you stay down in that office, you got a fistful of milk. I'm like, well. Here is the reason behind animals getting smaller. It's that the well, temperature yeah, of the well, earth yeah. is rising. Larger animals have more difficulty surviving in a hotter environment. And they think that it's going to continue and that animals will continue to get smaller. But this is a point of controversy in the scientific community. Many scientists believe they will continue to get smaller. Others say something's got to give. That's all I have for you on that. What, um, what would give? Like, you know, they're like, look, sooner or later, these fuckers are going to start eating the lower halves of these other fuckers' faces <laughs> and their upper halves are going to have to watch. <laughs> yes, that is exactly their thinking. Best defense they got against a predator is a face full of fucking milk, man. You go out like a fucking fish. You got one chance to save the rest of your body. You ain't ever getting your fish chin back. But with a face full of milk, you at least could live half a life under the sea. Granted, your fucking everything down there is going in your mouth like other fish's milk and fucking fish poo. Tell me about it. Oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> a little cameo from our old friend. Yeah. Well, uh, one last question to get us to three questions in the why. I have one last question. <laughs> Will you kill me? <laughs> I don't Will care. Release me into the ocean. I'll take my chances. But living in a bowl by myself, swimming around with my own poo and milk. <laughs> I got to add milk. <laughs> See, I did learn something. I jerk off because I got nothing to do, but then I got to have any paper fucking towels. 
So the milk just floats around. And sometimes I forget it's there and I breathe it in. I breathe my whole fucking mouth. Believe that. Kill me, motherfucker. Put my bubble on the stove. I don't want to live. Well, I'm so that. glad the world got to see that when you're not actually talking, you continue to do the. <laughs> That's called staying in character. The commitment to the bit, isn't it? Yeah. Fucking Miss Meryl Streep, she would stop when she wasn't doing lines. She'd be like, what would be the point? With her eyes all closed and shit. But my point is like, you keep doing it even when you're not talking. Because you will be talking soon. We got to make the Goldfish movie and have Jared Leto star in it. So that like for six months of his life, he's just like this the whole time. Just a dinner, like one and second. People are like, "What is wrong with him?" Like he's on some kind of drug. They're like, no, he's doing a goldfish movie for sure. <laughs> Could totally make it. I don't know if we get a whole fucking goldfish movie out of it, but like a series, twenty-two minutes a piece of that fucking <laughs> sad fish. Um. Okay, one right. more, one more, so one it? more. What why? And that is from that Adam Lee. Uh, that, that Adam Lee writes. That Adam Lee. That Adam Lee. Adam Lee. Do yes. it all Adam Lee. You can't it's, fucking do it like a. If you can't do it right, do it Adam Lee. Yeah, his name is a, is a basically an adverb. I went. Um, I had a good friend in college, and her mother's maiden name was Titus, and yeah. everyone in their family sounded like a disease. Martha Titus, Richard Titus, they all had some t- itis. That's fun, fun man. So I'm going to use that in my pitch tomorrow. I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? I'm like, I don't know. It's a a funny itis. itis Uh, I forgot the thing I was going to say. So I'll say this. (laughs) It's going to have to. Can you give me two seconds? I just need to text it. What was the fucking thing that I said I was going to do? They're like, did you just say your text out loud as you write it? I was like, that's how I work. Give me one second. Why are you doing this, Kevin? Then I'm getting mad. (laughs) (laughs) Then I'm getting mad because... Andy's not answering fast enough. And I'm like, doesn't he know I'm on a pitch? I need this information instantly. <laughs> They're like, who is Andy? And I'm like, Andy McAlfer. She's the guy that I do education with. What's education? This is a show like Cocktail Party Science. We got a fucking fish in a bowl. He's real fucking depressed because he lives by himself in a bowl. He talks, he's like, this. He's like, I don't want to live no more. Please kill me. I pray to Jesus that Jesus will come for me, but he don't come. I come and I breathe my own milk. Breathe it right in. If they're breathing, they breathe water, right? It filters through their gills. So if it, a fish swims into milk, does it go into its gills? Like, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure, Kevin. That'll give you or something to think they, about. Or can they pull oxygen from it? Is it like, you know, if you're playing, playing a Super Mario game and you get a mushroom, does it make you more powerful? The fish <laughs> doop, 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 swims doop, doop, through melt. its own fucking melt. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> it's a power up is what it is. Okay, ask your why. Do people with photographic memories, are they more depressed than others because they can perfectly recall all of their cringiest moments? I say no. I say if you can remember everything, that means you remember the good. We tend to remember the bad because we're idiots and we focus on the negative. So imagine if you remembered everything, which means all the good, which you generally tend to forget because it's easier to focus on the bad. So I think if you had that power of complete retention, you'd be like Mary Lou Henner. She lives up the hill from me. One of the nicest people in the world. Always has a smile on her face. Why? She remembers every fucking detail. You ask her about like day fucking four of episode 28 of working on Taxi and what Tony Danza said. She'll fucking tell you. She's like, he was like, who's the boss? And you're like, you're fucking brilliant, lady. How do you fucking remember that shit? I've told you. I was working in NBC and... She came into my office by mistake. She goes, oh, I'm lost. Can you tell me how to get back to reception? And I'm like, reception that you just walked by? That is within sight of where you were standing? That's not the same as knowing what color pants you wore on fucking this. <laughs> I don't know. Three. Come on. I don't know. Well, um, the condition sounds- of having, it's a mimetic memory or 
highly superior autobiographical memory is what they're referring to as someone who remembers everything that happens in their life to them. And they do say that people with that are more likely to feel depressed because they think it's an OCD condition that is similar to OCD and that they find themselves caught in loops and it, and it becomes this uh, perseverating behavior. Wow, man. So, so the answer this is, time, I was jealous of those who could fucking retain it all. But turns out fucking blazing it all away was the way to go whole time. Yeah. yeah. And what I did, because I don't smoke pot, is because I have a really good memory and I remember all of the cringy moments is I started to do a podcast with you so that I could supplant those cringy moments with hundreds and hundreds of new cringy moments. You know, it's cringy. Cringy <sighs> moment is a fucking, is the whole world seeing this bird eat the lower half of your face while you're <laughs> terrified, whip around and use your eyes to fucking stare right at this thing that's just like... <sighs> I mean, you know how cringy weird it is when fucking people look at you when you're getting a blow job or if you're getting eaten out like if you're getting eaten out they're like looking up at you and if you're getting a blow job they're like ah, i don't i don't sure you do you know what i'm talking about same thing with this fucking fish who's getting the half of the lower half of his face eaten he's literally looking in the eyes of this fucking bird and this bird's like what are you gonna do <laughs> what are you gonna do except become bird poop isn't that crazy you're one and only life you're, that's it. No more Milton for you, man. You're Milton in my fucking body. And then you become shit. Literally my mm-hmm. shit. You it's- are special to someone, but you're becoming shit. How weird is that? And you're going to think about this as I eat your lower face. I'm going to do it slow. I might take a dump using your face faster than I eat the top half of your head. I'm going to keep you alive. You're fucking flailing around anyway and shit. I'll be honest with you. I don't eat because I need to. I, I'm fucking killed because I want to. <laughs> okay. I'm a, I'm a turn. What bird was it? An osprey. I'm an osprey, motherfucker. And you ain't ever going to have no offspring because I'm yeah. eating your lower half of your face. And even if you manage to escape, who's going to fuck you with no lower half of Os- your face? Osprey to your God. It won't do any good. <laughs> You are going to be melting in your own fins for the rest of your fucking life. So you might as well stop moving and let me eat the fuck out of you. First, I'm going to rip open your guts, let them fall on the ground, and lesser first, birds. First, they eat the bottom of their face. Yeah, that first. And then <laughs> rip open your gut. He knew about the face part. It was happening. He didn't have to yes. remind me shit. He's like, I'm going to rip open your guts. The guts fall on the ground. Lesser birds are going to eat it. And then what? He eats the meat? Yeah. Why don't he eat the guts, the osprey? So like, yeah, he can like do whatever shit. he wants. He's like, that shit's nasty. Maybe he had, he might have eaten, he got to learn that from experience. He probably ate some things, guts, and it had poop in it. And he was like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I'm never doing that again. And all of those his other bird friends are like, why don't you eat the oval? It's fucking hot, man. And he's like, oh, you fucking be my guest. One time I ate a fucking kidney full of piss. I had a mouthful of piss. I couldn't get that taste out of my mouth for a fucking week, man. My Osprey wife wouldn't fucking kiss me and shit. I got her jacket said Osprey fucker on it. She wouldn't wear it. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Oh, God. Help me. <laughs> Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Have you been looking for all my old podcasts? The ones I started recording back in 2007? Well, guess what? I found them. They're all hiding in That Kevin Smith Club. See all the video you've never seen, including exclusive movies and live shows. You want some swag? That Kevin Smith Club is making pins and miniature versions of my old scripts. If you want to be involved in the least exclusive, most inclusive club on the net, join That Kevin Smith Club. Now's your chance to club Kevin Smith. That All right. kills the why. That's getting, we're out of the why. We, you know what it takes us to is the buy. Oh my God. That's right. The buy. The finale, man. As Carol Burnett would say, um, I'm so glad we had this time. Or sing. Yeah. She would sing. Call that uh, not say. Call that singing. Come now. <laughs> oh, wow. What, uh, what Jennifer Lopez did at the inauguration, that's singing. Let's You're like, on. let me honor and destroy Carol Burnett at the same time. 
I was giving her props, but then you had to go overboard. It's about time people took her down a peg. (laughs) That beloved American entertainer. I will probably had a friend that she grew up with that was funnier than her. I would no, never. she went on to be the uh, be the funny one. Do you think so? You think she was just like, oh my god, my! I bet you she thought her grandmother was funnier than her. That's why she pulled on her ear. Yeah, that was always for her grandmother. She did. Yeah. Well. All right. So good night for her grandma watching. Such a charming story. Wouldn't it be amazing if at the end of her life, when when God forbid, this worst of all possible worlds where we don't have a Carol Burnett anymore, but like they're like she wanted this known after she died. Every time she tugged on her ear, it was a huge fuck to the following people. And they list the names. Uh, and it's not even people like, you know, old timey fucks. Like it's, <laughs> it's it, it covers a couple generations. It's not like, fuck you, Lionel Wagner. It's not that at all. <laughs> because she liked him. Yeah, Especially she liked Wonder because, Woman. So she was yeah. like, yeah, he did, did some good work. And also, he was on the show with her as well. Oh, I know. I'm saying, though, he went on to greatness. He went on to fucking even better shit than that. You know what he did, right? What he's really known for, where he made his fortune. I do. Tell Star him. wagons. That's right. With two yeah, Gs. You on a movie set, and you're uh, in a trailer. You're fucking inside Lyle Wagner, man. Yeah. Lyle Wagner's like, Stephen, I have a wonderful idea. I've decided I'd like to collect the shit and urine of every famous person in Hollywood. So I'm going to start building honey wagons where they can shit and poo or shit and pee. And I will then collect the honey wagon and bring it back to our, to our lot. See, I go the other way. I thought, I, th- I think where he's a genius is like, he's like, honey, I'm going to create a place where the actors will fuck. <laughs> They're going to be covered in milt everywhere, man. We call them milt wagons. <laughs> she's and she's like, like, why don't you call them star wagons? Why don't you call them producers' couches like everyone else? <laughs> Darkness. Dark. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Let's go back to the beginning of the buy. Milt. And the buy is where we tell about talk about recent stories in science that are fun and interesting. For example, first one, one is that octopus. You know, Octopus, have you seen like My Octopus Teacher, that documentary? And it's wonderful. And Octopus will often enlist the help of other fish to hunt for fish in different crevices and other things. Well, it turns out they've just discovered this behavior where if the fish isn't helping them or or gets off, uh, you know, off topic, they punch it in the face. So Octopus punch their helper fish in the face. My God, you should try that here next time in person. Anytime I'm like, bye, you're like, poof. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, what were you saying, Andy? Octopus are, are they're strange. I mean, I, everyone should watch that series or watch anything about octopus. Yeah. And you tell me, or octopi, and you tell me they're from this planet. It is crazy. I mean, we did talk about that in a recent education that there is some evidence where people believe because of their DNA that they come from another planet. That they came here frozen on a fucking asteroid that yeah. crashed into our oceans and then they were frozen and they fucking came to life and they're like, this is our new home. Let's start <laughs> punching fish in the fucking face. And they, they spent a millennia bullying fish, bothering fish. They were fish bombers, <laughs> which is what every bird wants to be. Every yeah. bird that's been bothered by Andy is like, I'm going to become a fish botherer. And shows up at his window. It's like, oh, yeah. While the octopus talk in monotone, I'm going to talk like I'm from a 30s gangster movie. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Wow, man. Fucking punchy octopuses. Yeah. Fucking. I'm hungry. You're not paying attention. How about like a a sucker sandwich? Yeah, man. Hey, fucking. Hey, pay attention. Mm hmm. It's like they're George Clooney slapping people around in a movie and shit. Not in real life. I don't know if he does that in real life, but I'm yeah, sure he we don't does know that, that he time. does that in real life. But in movies, he's the kind of guy. I don't even know he's done it in a movie, but in my little <laughs> sketch, he is. There's a lot of disclaimers. Fuck. It's just like George Clooney, although it's very much unlike him. <laughs> in the George I... Clooney movie that I can't think of right now. All right. Um, have you ever, all right. What else? Have you ever wondered what would happen? Oh. If you accidentally 
swallowed like a little pin you would use to pin stuff together to sew. What would happen to your body if you swallowed it? Well, I saw a movie about that called Swallow. Really? Yeah, it's fucking intense, bro. It's a good movie. It's about this girl who like she's married to this dude who's like a broker or whatever the fuck. He's in finance. And she lives in this like pristine house and everything's perfect and shit, but like emotionally remote. And she starts eating things. And one of the things she eats is a fucking needle. She eats like a rock. She eats like she eats batteries. She starts eating like shit where they look at her and she's got like a gut full of metal and shit like that. Oh, it's it was it's a haunting movie. You should watch it. But wait, so what happens when you eat a a needle is it don't necessarily well a 17 year old boy in germany found out this summer no no why did he do it he was sewing something and as i always say never sew it's too dangerous you can ride a motorcycle but don't sew yeah he swallowed a pen he didn't realize it and then he started to complain and for three days he had this very intense chest pain Oh my and God, he couldn't, all you have to do to shut me up is start talking about shit. lie me. down and it would hurt more. And he didn't know how to do it. So they took him to the doctor. They gave to the hospital. They gave him an ECG, an electrocardiogram. Oh God. And they discovered that mm. the pin uh. had found its way mm. to stab him in the heart. Oh God, I knew it. Fuck, I can't hear this story. Oh, this is horrible. Fucking how? It came out of his what? Trachea or something? And what went Swallowed into his... through and found its way through his intestines and it stabbed into his heart. And you know what happened? Don't I die. The doctors removed it within hours and he was completely fine. You sure? Yes, I'm positive. That's exactly what happened. So he got stabbed in the heart and lived. He did. From Satan's, from the depths of hell, they stabbed at him. And yet. Hell's heart, I stab at thee. Um, at your he, heart. He, uh, wow, that's fucking, that's, I mean, sky's the limit at that point, right? Yeah. So the next time you see your kids sewing, you got to be like, where'd you learn how to do it? They'd be like, I learned it from you, dad. Yeah. <laughs> tell you something right now guy's lucky to be alive he is but he got good care and it was a freak accident and he's okay so that's all good he swallowed it by accident swallowed it by accident he didn't even know he'd swallowed it he was eating while he was doing it and that's why i tell my kids never eat yeah never chew. sew or chew everything yeah Oh my God. Even then, even if he was chewing and he chewed on the pin and it went in his jaw, even that would hurt. All of this is bad. The moral of the story, I think you're absolutely right. Never so. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. if give it to somebody who swallows swords professionally, yeah. that way in case they accidentally swallow the pin, they'll know what to do. Don't, don't sew where you eat. Nice. There you go. There's there you go. Awesome. That's yeah. the thing. Okay. We have just one more. In this, I mean, this this three and a half hours has flown by with with this new uh, abridged edition. And I just want to tell you the last story. I think you're going to like it. I'm ready for because it. It is about the little beetle that could. Hmm. Um, there is a beetle discovered. It's called um, Regimbartia attenuata. And it lives in uh, Japan. And uh, Shinja Shigura of Kobe University discovered this behavior, that when it is swallowed by a pond frog, it makes its way all the way through the pond frog and pops out of its asshole completely fine. Who? What? This beetle, a beetle. Then when the pond frog eats the beetle, the beetle goes, gets all the way through the frog and pops out of its ass. And they think that in order to get out of its ass, it stimulates its ass to think that it has to poo and the, and the frog poos it out and it's fine. It's like, da da. Why did the frog eat it? Because it was a delicious little morsel. It's a tasty little treat. So <clears throat> it did eat, it did get satisfied, but it didn't get the nutrients because this thing lived. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a diet beetle, like frogs that are gaining a little, they should eat that. And it just comes flying out of their butt. Um, and they don't feel this? Like this thing crawling through them and shit? I think that it, I don't think it even bothers them at all because they just think that they're pooping. 
So you're always talking about animals turning into another animal's poop. Yeah. This thing just pretends to be poop. That's true. Like Andy Dufresne crawled out of a frog's asshole to get out of Shawshank prison. Yes. <laughs> um, wow, man, that beetle. What make a movie about that beetle? Mm -hmm. I mean, they have out of some frog's asshole to get out. The That's a beetle. <laughs> love, love me, do point. Beetle or the needle? That's beetle or needle. On the way, it stabs the heart just as it with a little sewing needle. That's the name of the episode. Beetle or the needle. Beetle or the needle. Thanks. I don't have to think of an episode title now. There you go. It's mimetic. What does it's, mimetic mean? Uh, uh, you're thinking of a mnemonic, I think. What does mnemonic mean? Mnemonic means something that you can remember easily, like um, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Well, I mean, you can remember that. Music itself is a mnemonic for the lyrics. People remember tunes. Uh, it helps them remember things. But I'm thinking more like a like an acronym would be a mnemonic, like Homes for the Great Lakes, Huron, um, oh, what is it? Other <laughs> Ontario, uh, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Stuff Isn't like that, that. An acronym? Like it's an acronym, NASA? but it's a mnemonic. It's a, it's a mnemonic. M N. One of the few words that starts with M N. Mnemonic 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 like mm -hmm. the mnemonic plague like johnny plague mnemonic. Johnny, johnny mnemonic, mnemonic. starring uh what's Keanu reeves that guy the greatest fucking movie stars of all time yeah um that was that truly the word mnemonic? johnny mnemonic yeah it finds was its place word? in the annals of uh moviedom by having a word that begins with mn did that word exist before cyberpunk yes Interesting. Many things did. Cyberpunk sort as of far as not as far as I'm concerned. Nothing <laughs> oh, that's right. for cyberpunk, man. <laughs> nothing. I'm um, hoping to get all serious on me. Yeah, I don't fucking I don't fuck around about cyberpunk. Who's the most famous cyberpunk writer of all time? Uh Neil who Stevenson. Wrote Johnny, who wrote Johnny Mnemonic? Uh it's not Neil Stevenson, is it? No. It's uh it's the guy that wrote Mona Lisa Overdrive. Uh and uh came up with the word cyberpunk and dragging yeah. in yeah yeah what's that I, think, I know i can't think of his name his work outlived the memory of his name if only there were a mnemonic to remember who wrote johnny mnemonic. <laughs> <laughs> um walter cronkite yeah, Reed. It's just like and that's the news <laughs> that is to today are we off camera we enter a world of cyber warfare. I'm going to go and write some crazy shit about a I'm near post-apocalyptic world. I'm going to write the news now. Nobody bother me. The man had a robot hand in the heart of a <laughs> demon. <laughs> the secret life of Cronkite. <laughs> cyber Cronkite. <laughs> fuck what is his name dude i i'm gonna look it up if only there were some device or there is cyberpunk i mentioned cyber walter something that's the name that's coming into my head no cyber no it's not that's why i said stevenson it's william gibson that's it it's they knew there was a w we were both wrong all together wrong william gibson. walter cronkite now what is his name now william gibson william gibson yeah william gibson he's the henry he, gibson of cyberpunk no he's the he's the edgar Allan poe i mean he's like it was like him and yeah. then who's the next person neil stevenson what did he write he wrote some books that were good about that stuff you were into cyberpunk you read it uh yes i read all those books i i loved uh i didn't love the sort of porn direction that it took with other writers but i did love william gibson i thought he was visionary and many he named many things like cyberspace was uh something Which he named is. but i was talking about neil stevenson oh he wrote uh like the cryptonomicon and you read that yeah why would you read the cryptonomicon um you are neither cyber nor punk why would you read that book because it was an interesting book that takes place in both world war ii and modern day about setting up 
he was a visionary who predicted that Bitcoin would become big. Oh my God, there are hidden depths that I didn't even know about you, that you've had a cyberpunky past. That's because they're hidden. Mm. <laughs> you see, why don't you want to cop, cop to that? I'll cop to it. I'll, you know, you know me, I'm easy going. It's but every time, I, every time you learn anything about me, it somehow turns back to like buying a filthy jacket for my wife that says <laughs> something on it. This fucker. <laughs> um you know you could do a line of jeans fish fucker jeans like they would sell people would be like i want a fish fucker on my ass well i'm gonna curse fish you now fucker. you'll never be able to watch superman without hearing lex luther say miss fish fucker <laughs> <laughs> miss fish fucker um do we have another one no i only brought three <laughs> three but a derringer holds two minimum oh well um there it is kids <laughs> derringer and a half full of the buy takes us to a two empty derringers of the education podcast for this week man because we did the four chambers we took our four shots we were not giving away our shots actually we did give away all four we shots we gave all of our shots there. away so there were so there are no more shots now we're just throwing the gun at you and yeah. running and for some reason superman always ducks like you shoot him and it's like, pew, 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 and then you throw a gun. And he's like, whoa, what the fuck, dude? Because you want to chip his tooth with that. <laughs> really? Yeah. He don't want to get pistol whipped. It's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound he makes. It's like whoa. Owen Wilson playing him. Wow. That was close. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Wow. 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 He grew up to be a peanuts teacher. Yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> What's that? No, I don't need a ride home. Wah, 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 wah. That's the uh, the peanuts, <laughs> peanuts in the teacher. What if, yeah, the, the teacher the Hulu series, the new Hulu series with the uh, what the girl with the dragon tattoo sister. I just want to have sex with you so bad, teacher. Wah, 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 wah. But I want to put this. Tell me where you want it. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Oh, you can't take it there. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Wah, chicka, wah, wah. <laughs> a teacher. Uh, starring <laughs> the teacher from the Peanuts. You don't even see the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the new name. He's just, you, know what the, you know what that voice is? He's just looking up at her the whole time. She's <laughs> off camera. I want to have legs. sex with you. The t a teacher. Wah, 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 wah. I guess I can start down here on the right height. <laughs> but just as he's about to get some, she pulls it away and he ends up flying away. <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> A riveting portrait of <laughs> sex with an educator. <laughs> I'll get your... <laughs> I'll get your kite stuck in a tree if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you know yeah, what the voice I'll, is? I sure will stick it in your pig pen. <laughs> <laughs> what is the voice? You want to tell it's me? A, it's a, a, a jazz trumpeter with a wah wah thing on it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Nowadays, they would fucking like, you know, put somebody in a booth and then have a sound engineer and rework it. No, nowadays, they would take a creature whose bottom half of its face had been eaten <laughs> while it was watching with the top of his face, and all it could, the only sound it could make was... Wah, 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 wah. You need two halves of your mouth to make... Wah, 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 wah. You can't make a wah without... But you can use half. the thing that the trumpeter used. Not wah, 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 wah. <laughs> On half his face and shit? And he's like, <laughs> it's like, it's a living. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> Dad, what would you have done with your life? If the lower half of your face hadn't been eaten, well, what not this? Well, well, well. <laughs> Why are you asking me this question? <laughs> Making me think about it. What kind of old question is that to ask your father who doesn't have a lower half of his face? And you know why? Mm. <laughs> they didn't get along. Oh, he's got your mother's eyes and your father's lower half of his face. <laughs> 
And the talk of the town is, why did they let it live? And they're like, it's not an it. They're like, well, technically it is, it's a fish. But still, even in this world where we're all anthropomorphic and shit, why did they let it live? <laughs> Something ate the lower half of its face. While he watched. <laughs> He's got to live with that. Not just the scars. That the is mental insult. scars. <laughs> the insult to injury is incalculable. Because the bird pooped it out. He couldn't even <laughs> go find his fucking jaw and put it back on. Mm -hmm. He knew that it was going to be poop. Unless it was being pushed out of the bird's asshole by a beetle. <laughs> they got them, them beetles that crawl out of assholes. And maybe he pushed his lower chin out. No, we should go look. It's like, oh, 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 I found my lip ring. Oh, 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 oh. Or he's like, you know, fucking fuck this. I'm not using this clarinet thing no more. Or corn thing. I don't know whatever the fuck it is. I want to steal the lower half of some other fucker's face and have it watch me do it. And so then he trains to be. Like the bird that ate the lower half of his face, he was just doing it to survive. No malice or anything like that. Yeah. But this fish enacts the violence on others in like on purpose. It becomes the James Gum, but yeah. just for the lower half of faces. Yeah. I you know, I mean he doesn't seem to appreciate. Maybe he'll get by the end of the movie. That he didn't need a lower half of his face. The fucking this thing, it makes him unique and memorable. Nobody's going to eat a fish that's fucking talking with one of these, putting on a show. He's got a whole backstory. He just yeah, he puts himself... Mr. Limpet to shame. Yeah, this fish is going to live forever like them kids in fame and shit. If he plays the <laughs> cards right. He's just got to get right mentally. I know he carries a lot of mental scars because he watched something eat the lower half of his face. But all he needs to do is flip the script. And remember that the eating of his face made him be this guy, and that changed his life. Maybe the end of the movie is like he re-meets the bird. And <laughs> <laughs> we can come full circle with him face to face, eye to eye, and fucking be like, you did me a favor. And then the bird goes, I never finished the job, and he ripped his guts out. <laughs> He's like, mm, seconds, correct. He's like, oh no, this, I've been hoisted on my own patar. At least I learned a valuable lesson before I leave this world. Take me next. Someone rip open my guts. Although the goldfish would lose its hand if something uh, ate the bottom of its face. <laughs> That's right. He would become this guy. Well, now I got to talk like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Swimming around in my own cum and breathing it. Go figure. Now I like it. It power ups me. It gives you something to do. <laughs> now I aim for it. Oh, God. Uh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the That's... silliest way to get super smart. If they had taught like this in high school, I'd be the brainiest person in the world. And they would so be in prison. I retain it all. No. <laughs> We didn't say nothing bad, man. Like, just because a motherfucking fish gets half its face eaten. That's nature. We were giving our fish half a chance. Like, what happens if you away? Following the story on. Disney don't give, they're the ones to get mad at. They give you the fake fucking death of the lemons and shit. We're dealing in reality here. We saw a fish get half its face fucking eaten. We know it's possible. And we know if that fish got away, he might live without a lower half of his face. And how would he talk? All of this is science. We well, you've you beautifully defended your thesis, Mr. Smith. Yeah, that's right. I, I commend you. I don't want anyone fucking ever throwing that Disney lemon shit at us. <laughs> we nobody squeeze no lemons. <laughs> oh. uh, we do not squeeze any lemons, ladies and gentlemen. And that's probably the most harrowing thing I learned tonight was that <laughs> Disney was like, well, just fucking get them dizzy and they'll fall off. He was probably like, just push him off with a rake. And they're like, Mr. Disney, yeah. that's killing him. And then he's like, all right, fucking build a platform, make him dizzy, and then they fall off. Do you feel better? Fuck well, Mr. Disney, asshole. why are you putting um uh, why are you putting these beds of nails around this the desk? None of your business. Yeah, so do the desk. 
because fucking, you know, look, we've already built the disc. Let's just see what that would look like when they <laughs> fucking go flying into the nails and shit. We're having lemon kebabs for dinner. They're like, you're fucking cruel. I'm like, no, I'm the guy that made Bambi. Bambi's mother was killed in the first fucking 10. You think I get a fuck about a lemon? You know, the hunter was me. I yeah. killed Bambi. <laughs> Yeah, right off camera. That was me. And I giggled and I fucking took my shirt off. And in the moonlight, I bathed in its blood. And I killed Mary Poppins' kid's mom. And I. <laughs> yes, every one of them characters. I had to give them motivation, man. You know who ate Nemo's mom and all his little brothers, all that fucking milt? Me. <laughs> Ten years after my death. I took my frozen head. <laughs> <laughs> That's like kept me alive so I can eat all the fucking heroes and parents of every movie we make. Because that's what motivates a star. You don't get a star without a motivation. And the motivation is, I ate your fucking mom. Or I and I started with the bottom of her face. Yeah, I looked right in her eyes. And I looked the lower half of her face. And I was like, your son's going to be famous. I know that gives you mixed feelings about all of this. I fucked with her mind. God. Before she left this world, she had to decide whether how she felt about her own demise because it was helping her son. And like a salmon that dies in a stream and is later eaten by the fucking fish come that it laid before it died. <laughs> that is the circle of life. <laughs> From spilt milk, you know, yeah. nobody cries over spilt milk, man. And because of milk, it's the circle jerk of life. <laughs> I got nothing. It's the circle jerk <laughs> of life. Milk. <laughs> we don't get as milty as we get, ladies and gentlemen, without our favorite uh, fucking professor, Andrew McElfrey. Not a real professor. We keep saying that, but I think he's only saying it for legal reasons. I think it was hard. <laughs> and for he rational reasons. That he is a professor. I do, anyway. When people ask me, who's your friend? Who's your smartest friend? I say, oh, my teacher friend, my professor, Andrew McElfrey. Not a real professor. They'll be like, he teaches? And I was like, yeah, man, let me get this. Do you know what fucking fish comes called? <laughs> They're like, wow, he sounds great, Kevin. <laughs> so like, Are you sure you're not talking about Jay? I'm like, Jay didn't even notice. Shit. I told Jay about milk because yeah. Andy told me because he's a professor. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, not a real professor, but wow. it's like the uh, the Eskimos have 58 words for snow. Jason Muse has 160 words for cum, and he didn't know milk. He didn't have milk, man. It was his was a milk free world. Should have given it to him at age 16. He would have turned it into absolute poetry and shit. Little beatnik that he was. <laughs> now he's all grown up, got a kid. I could hand him Milt right now. He'd be like, that's fucking weird. And then he'd forget. And then on stage, I'm like, Milt, right? And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it's fucking fish cum. You would have remembered that in your fucking teens. He's like, I'm not a kid anymore. I've got a fucking five-year-old child and a wife. Isn't it time we all grew up and stopped doing this? I'm like, it's where the money is. This is where we make the Milt. He's like, I thought Milt was fucking cum. And I'm like, whatever. <laughs> And it proves out that he's the smarter of the two of us after all. Oh my God. Um, that, ladies and gentlemen, um, is education for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. And I'm Andy McAlfresh. And just at the end, Kevin froze. Oh my God, he froze. You froze? You froze for me. We'll do it again. Okay. That is education for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. And I'm Andy McAlfresh. And you have been edgemilted. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs>